Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Rivian reports earnings next week, and this is really an important earnings report given the fact that there's been so much change in the electric vehicle market in the last few months alone. There's a lot of changes going on in traditional vehicles with higher interest rates. It's getting harder to get loans for vehicles. So a lot is going on in the EV market. And even some policy questions have been answered with Rivian not getting the full $7,500 EV tax credit, which I think was a really interesting announcement just in the last few weeks. So I want to go through what I'm looking for when earnings are released and specifically what I want to hear from management. That's going to be really key. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Rev Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And if you're interested in disruptive companies like Rivian, check out Asymmetric Investing. I have a link to that in the show notes. I'm covering stocks with 10x potential there. If you like Rivian, I think you'd really enjoy that. Let's start by looking at the production. Let's start by looking at the production numbers from the first quarter. This is Rivian's release from early April. First quarter production was 9,400 vehicles and deliveries were about 8,000 vehicles. Management did say they were on track to deliver 50,000 vehicles this year. Remember when that number came out, it was a little disappointing because investors were expecting more like 70 or 80,000 vehicles. So look for that number to be something that's talked a lot about on the conference call. Rivian really needs to be able to hit that. And the best case scenario is that they actually exceed that. That would actually be a real positive. And I'm going to go over to the shareholder letter from the fourth quarter here to just highlight some of the things that I'm looking for because a lot of the information that they provide each quarter is exactly the same. And sometimes when it changes, that's really jarring for investors. So this one was actually the big shock to me last quarter. The company usually starts with what their backlog looks like. So how many orders do they have in the backlog? So then we can kind of figure out how long that lasts, whether it lasts into 2024, into 2025, depending on how fast they increase production. They actually stopped reporting that. So I would love to hear more about what the backlog looks like from an order side from management, they may not release it in this piece, but they will likely get questions about it, if nothing else, during the conference call. The other big number to look at here is cash. So exactly how much cash is on the balance sheet? Because right now Rivian's burning cash at a really rapid rate. So it just needs to have that cushion to be able to get to the point where it's cash flow positive. And here's the next thing to look at. Gross profit is gonna be a really critical number for Rivian. That's gonna tell us what the cost of revenue is trending. It's likely that revenue doesn't change real significantly from the fourth quarter because production wasn't up a whole lot from the fourth quarter. But are is the cost of revenue starting to come down at all? That's really going to be key. You can see that R&D expenses started to come down pretty rapidly. Some of the expenses are going to shift from operating expenses to production expenses. So that's maybe to be expected. But there was also a round of layoffs at Rivian. So Hopefully operating expenses continue to come down because at the end of the day, this net loss number, and I'll get to the cash flow number in a second, those are really going to be critical for Rivian. Here's the statement of cash flows. And this is really telling us what's going on with operations. In the 12 months ended 2022, burned through $5 billion in cash. Now, there was $12 billion in cash in the balance sheet. You can only do that for a little over two years. These numbers aren't going to stay constant because you have big changes like inventory. If we go down a little bit further, you have capital expenditures of over a billion dollars each of the last two years. Those kind of investments are going to continue. But one of the biggest questions that Rivian faces is, are they going to be able to get to that finish line? Are they going to be able to get to the point where the normal Illinois facility is churning out 200,000 vehicles a year at a high margin? and able to generate positive free cash flow. And is that enough? Or do they need to have that Georgia facility that's under construction right now? Do they need to have that move forward just to be able to get to positive cash flow? Given the current operating expenses, I question whether they can even get to positive free cash flow just with that normal Illinois plant. And that gets to the next piece. And that is what is it, what exactly is going on with the Georgia plant? One of the challenges for Rivian is that high price vehicles particularly high price electric vehicles have really suffered a crunch in demand over the last few months. That could be because interest rates are rising. It could be because there's more lower price competition in the market. But when Rivian didn't announce what their backlog was last quarter, that was a big red flag to me because I questioned how much demand there's going to ultimately be for an $80,000 vehicle 
that's around double what you can get for an internal combustion engine vehicle. They're going to face a lot of the same questions and pricing challenges that Tesla has. And what we've seen over the last few months is that Tesla has reduced prices really significantly. Rivian doesn't have the same ability to do that because it's not profitable yet. It's not generating positive free cash flow. It hasn't reached scale. So there's going to be a lot of questions around when can it reach that level of scale? What are the pricing and demand trends look like for Rivian? I hope we get more answers than we got last quarter because right now the trends that we're seeing from Tesla specifically don't look all that positive. Rivian does have the advantage that it's a younger company, so it's growing off of a much, much smaller base. It'd be a much harder challenge if the company was producing a million vehicles, not making money right now, but it's only producing maybe 50,000 vehicles this year probably can get through this year by selling everything that it makes. But the questions really start in 2024. So looking for some keys into that, but that's what I'm looking for. What are you looking for in the quarter? I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Rev Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.